So in this video, we're going to be looking here also at the preferences. There are a couple options. First of all, there are preferences here uh, in this tab, in the fourth tab here you have uh, in your plugin view, where you can basically give the CC711, so volume expression and so on. Here are the controllers on, so they will be affected if you have a, another MIDI controller, slider, something on. You want to actually affect these things here as well, and you change your knob tracking either to radial or linear here as well. It shows you the version that you're running here and uh, the uh, offline processing mode which uh, you could leave to high unless you have some performance issues and you can change them to faster um, this the one part of the preferences that you have and the other ones actually here also in the setup now once again there are many different options so i just open this up here and start here from the top to give you the idea uh, first of all you can actually set your color team so if you want to black and dark that's probably the new trend here right now we use everything darker here um, and we have a couple of other things as you can see here uh, what's going to happen with the peak information the audio levels here uh, recording to the saving and loading things uh, some of the other settings here for default and file associations now there is also a, a startup and shutdown options that we have actually what should be loaded and in terms of shutdown here as well so you can set these as well and even you can prevent your screensaver if you feel this is annoying you can do this directly here and don't have to go to your windows now your audio drivers i think you should have an ac driver in some way for this i use screen recording so i have a voice emitter here as a recording way to get the ac levels to my uh, recording here otherwise i would use just my regular audio interface um, and i have also here some assignments for my master bus that I can make here so if I actually um, click on that I will see here all the ins and outs and I can make some changes here um, I have some settings for my audio engines as well which basically affect more or less your MIDI and performance overall so you can actually change that here if you have some issues with dropouts and poppings and things like that definitely check out these settings here otherwise just leave them as is I do that and that works fine here um, MIDI devices if you have uh, MIDI devices on I mean I have a few of them connected and uh, you can see you can choose from all these MIDI devices that you have on here um, there are plugin options. These are basically the standard uh, folders for your VST plugins. You can add more. Sometimes you have actually three, four, five destinations of your folders here, which you can actually uh, add. And once you're not sure, you can actually run a full scan here of your entire drive. And it actually looks through these folders here uh, that you have set. Now there is also a recording and listing here that you have here. Uh, where you have a couple of options to choose from your MIDI recorder tells you basically where you save your MIDI files um, and what's the, the name actually that you want to give for that it has actually a predefined uh, format for that the same is go the audio same thing here you can actually set the name as well as the location where you want to put that now the metronome here you can also set the loudness the volume control here basically uh, and uh, what kind of sound you want you have actually ding and things to choose from i think you can even here uh, click on load your own ones here uh, so there are a couple options for that if you use uh, actually your uh, uh, keyboard layout what is that that's if you want to actually uh, play here as well there's this option uh, don't think it's much of a use here for my purposes but maybe you want to be uh, considering doing that having a real keyboard I think it's uh, really helpful uh, to play especially if you want to do piano um, and actually you have the option here to to add some e external tools and I have never tried that really but what it basically allows you here is uh, you have some uh, things that you can actually put in here such as arguments and things like that uh, and you could add these new ones um, I leave that out for now since I don't find much of a use for that and there might be some uh, better uh, other videos out there for people who actually engage and involve in that and, and show you the best use so uh, customize is uh, referring to the menu here the access toolbar that you see right there you actually have a here are the main things uh, and you actually to choose from and you can customize that here as well 
and overall it gives you basically the information here of your updates your information version numbers and so on so that's pretty much about all the options that you have here and these are actually corresponding to that so if you click here on media devices you will see it opens up the same options menu and it will you will come to the thing same goes here so the MIDI controller assignments that might be something useful for you as well if you actually want to have uh, or program changes or something like that controlled you do live performances and things uh, to include them here and assign some MIDI controller um, here you can do that now there is also a, uh, a MIDI filter where you can actually uh, have a couple of options depending on what device first of all here and you can actually add these things here as well um, there is uh, the options for plugins so this refer to your VST plugins so that's actually the same window as we looked through before um, as you can see here in racks and plugins you have actually these options to add these plugins here as you can see here there is a drop down and there are some of the plugins that you have actually in the folders that you determined and they're listed here uh, so you can choose from one of these if you feel like you want to add that for example, if you want to have another EQ here, um, actually this is not registered right now. I do have the audio interface and it came along with that, but I think I have this on another drive. So, But I think um, the Air ones actually should be uh, fine here. So as you see, if I open up one of these, I actually can implement them and the, when I play here. You see the effect. They affect instantly here also my instrument um, now this is a quicker way actually to not go into the DAW and do that if you just live perform this might be actually a really good way to to do that and you have the, this uh, option here again to scan your folders and stuff um, and uh, some of the basic as you see here options the mix values like how much dry how much wet you want to have actually and even the panning you can also change here in this in these settings and it depends really on what plugins you have and you want to run here so that would be pretty much here and um, that's also some additional settings here in the in the options uh, that's what we just look at the scan on for the folders that's the same thing so it would actually run through uh, all of these uh, folders that you have here um, set in your VST plugins now you also have a Windows control here so if you click on that you will have your standard mixer so this is not uh, from the program this is actually your standard mixer here the same goes actually here for you for your setting in your Windows actually it, it's a nice way to have a direct link here and uh, the sound control panel is as well coming from Windows actually it says here Windows so these are the the other options that you have here really to change and I think that's pretty much it in terms of preferences and options that you can actually change here gives you a lot of choices um, and it depends really on your own needs what you actually want to look into more in detail and change